Alrighty folks, welcome back to the Mavericks Dynasty. Today we are doing the off season for the end of season four, going into season five. Coaching carousel, I don't want any of these crap jobs. Levon Hilliard still got work to do. Alright, so it looks like we've lost both of our coordinators. Doug Martin and Brian Ward have moved on. We got Mr. Jason Candle as our new o OC. And we have Mr. Nick Holt as our new defensive coordinator. Looks like our offensive coordinator is a god. He's got 24 points we can put into him. But uh, we'll have a 5% chance of getting the insta commit, so I'm happy to see it. And defensive coordinator Nick Holt is actually a level 17, so that's pretty good. So offensive coordinator Jason Candle. I hope this guy stays with us forever. This dude's one of the best coaches. Look at all those points we got into all these things. Plus three to everything. Our quarterbacks, every position is just going to be godly. Wow, John Harvey is not going to leave. I'm actually very shocked. I thought he would as a 99 overall. It looks like our safety, Mr. Orgy, is wanting to leave for the draft as a six rounder. I can see why he wants to, but he can get that overall up to like at least a 95, 96. I'm going to actually try to talk him into staying because I think if he stays and gets that overall point, he could be a number one draft pick. Uh, okay, you talked me into it. He's going to stick out and earn his degree. It's a good decision, Mr. Orgy. You can get a much higher stock in the draft as long as you don't get injured. All right, so players leaving. Adam Wayne, one of my favorite receivers from Lake Jackson, Texas, right in our backyard. He's going to finish his career with 78 catches, 1,600 yards, and nine total touchdowns. Very good career for this young man. In 2014, that was his first year, had a very good year, 2015 year. I don't know if he was injured or if he just wasn't playing as much, but he got eight catches. And then 2016, he had a very good year, five touchdowns, almost 900 receiving yards. And he carried the ball one time for nine. And he's going to finish with a 75 overall. Um, he's a very good slot receiver, very fast with 93 speed and 93 XL. I don't think he's going to necessarily be an NFL type player, and I don't think he's going to get there, but he's going to get his degree, and he's been a legend for this team. Made some big plays for us, and I'm sad to see him go, but we wish him the best in his future endeavors. Stan Means from Scranton, PA, the Electric City. He's going to finish a 77 overall, okay. And he finished his career with 47 tackles, 11 for a loss, very good. Four sacks, an interception, which was a pick six, and a pass deflection as well. You know, Stan Means was a guy who was with the team from the very first year when we were scrubs. He was a starter then, had a very good year, six TFLs his first year, and in 2016 he started. So I'm very happy for him. Um, I was glad we got him that touchdown to end his career. For some reason, I feel like this dude's a biologist, so so he'll take his little science degree. He just looks like he's very into it. I don't know. It's like he likes just dissecting frogs and other animals, so we'll see what he does in his life, and hopefully he'll be back to come on, you know, some kind of reunion for the team. So Stan Means, I'm giving you the salute, son. Pierre Dodd, another OG member of the team. Finished with a 79 overall. That's really good, actually. I'm surprised. Some really decent coverage skills there. He's going to finish with 68 tackles, 3 for a loss, 2 interceptions, 4 pass deflections, and I'm really proud. He was kind of a backup his last year, got a couple tackles, but his first year he was balling out for us, 2 picks, 45 tackles, so I'm happy for him. Pierre Dodd was kind of our backup in his last year, but he's definitely a valued member of this team and we love him to death. And Jason Maxwell as well, another OG going to finish with 20 catches for 428 yards and three touchdowns a longest catch of 58 yards and 2013 was the first year that was that was our crap year and he did really good with 384 receiving yards going to finish with a 69 overall decent little player for us i'm happy for mr maxwell i feel like he's definitely got a law degree he's definitely got that look you see his little hair definitely needs to clean his hair up a little bit it's kind of looking a little weird but i feel like this dude's going to be like our attorney for some reason in the coming years sean cleveland our center finishes with a 71 overall three pancakes and only one sack given up i think he's more of a backup but he is a little bit chunky and we're going to definitely miss him sean cleveland a valued member of our front five jason witherspoon our free safety from northridge ohio 72 overall he finished with he finished with seven total tackles. Didn't really do much in his career. He's kind of been a backup. Any tackles you make for the Mavericks that puts you in high regard, you know, you'll be loved for the rest of your life, Mr. Witherspoon. Jason Rouse, the fullback, 70 overall from Ward... Wal Can I pronounce that? Nope. Waldorf, Maryland. Finished with 39 carries, 
150 yards and six rushing touchdowns. And he also had 10 catches for 31 yards and two receiving touchdowns. Definitely a solid fullback for us. He's bailed us out of a lot of situations in his career. Just a fan favorite of mine. I love him. He's been with us since the beginning, and all I can do is shake his hand and go cry in private. And Jake Marshall, he's going to finish with an 80 overall power back. He was our starter for all four years. Finishes with an 88 speed, 85 XL. Finishes with a 94 spin move, 86 juke. Pretty decent catching abilities too, 70 in the 70s for all that. Wow, and Jake was just a workhorse for us. Like I said, he was our starter all four years. 742 carries for almost 4,000 yards, 3,989. Averaged a 5.4. 51 touchdowns in his career, a long of 65. And I mean, like I said, uh, he had a good year. The first year we were kind of rough because the line was rough. And, you know, it was, 2013 was a rough year for us. But all three of his last years, he finished with 1,000 yards. He had 1,100, 1,200 his junior year. So just a really good running back. He was he was more of a power back for us, definitely between the tackles type guy. He'll bust off 5 to 10 yards. And he did that consistently. Great averages throughout his career. And he'll finish with 138 catches, 1,540 receiving yards, and six catching touchdowns. And he was definitely a dual threat. And his, the first year when he was a freshman, he caught 56 for 679 yards. He was definitely a dual purpose that year and always been a pretty good receiving back. But we shall see. Hopefully he can try to make it onto a uh, rookie minicamp, try to make it in the NFL. Might be a practice squad guy, but we'll see how his career goes from here. Definitely would love to see him come back and coach this team. We could definitely use him as a running backs coach or an offensive coordinator. But we're definitely going to miss him in our backfield. And, and Zach Blunt, 27 for 29 in his career with a 93 percentage, a long of 45. Just did an incredible job. Zach Blunt, he's definitely was getting high. Definitely probably some drug test we should have gave him. But he's doing good things for us. I'm happy for him. And he's moving on to greener pastures. Ryan Christian from Conyers, Georgia. Going to finish his career with 31 tackles, 17 for a loss. And this guy was mostly a backup, but in his first year in 2014 was very good for us. He gets eight quarterback sacks and a forced fumble. Like I said, he was a starter in 2014 and a very good year with nine TFLs and was a backup. But when, we, when he subbed in, he killed it. 74 overall. He's a good kid. Ryan Christian, I love him. Made some big plays for us. And all I can do is give him a standing ovation. Antonio Hurd finishes with an 84 overall, our right tackle. This guy was a god. 90 pass block, 89 run block. He had 11 pancake blocks, 17 sacks given up. But when you play right tackle for me, I scramble out to the right a lot. So it's really understandable. When Antonio Hurd, though, was a beast. Six foot seven. And Chance Fitzpatrick, 250 carries for 1,300 yards and 24 rushing touchdowns. He was our quarterback for about a year or two and then he, we switched him to running back and he had a very good time as our backup running back he was one of the most reliable players we've ever had and he also got 19 passes 136 yards and a receiving touchdown and like i said he was our quarterback in 2013 2014 had 338 attempts 190 completions 2700 passing yards 19 touchdowns 14 picks but Fitzpatrick was a beast. Like I said, we converted him to running back in 81 overall, 82 speed, 89 excel. Break tackle was 91. Wow, I didn't even know that. But yeah, Chance Fitzpatrick, I once described him as the heart of the team, and it's going to suck to lose him. Him and his bald head, he was a very good player for us. Like I said, he was our quarterback. He was definitely a leader in the locker room, and it's going to hurt to lose this man. And John Harley out here, our linebacker. This was a He was a very solid player for us. He's been here since the beginning, 101 total tackles. 13 TFLs, one sack, two pass deflections, a forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, a block. Don't even recall that, but yep, like I said, he kind of started out slow because he was a backup, but 2015, 2016, he killed it, was out there balling, doing his thing, a very good linebacker for us. And Adam McGee, one of our receivers, didn't really play for us a lot. He was a backup, but he had six catches for 69 yards, no touchdowns. But yeah, we tried to get him involved at least as much as we could, but Adam McGee's gonna get his degree. That rhymed, but he's out of here and we love him. Him and he's also got a bald head. George Jenkins, one of our backup tight ends, had 13 catches, 104 yards, three receiving touchdowns. I definitely tried to get him involved as much as I could, but 
He had a superstar above him, but George Jenkins was a good player. Anyone named George, you gotta love him. And 72 overall, and he's moving on to the Great Divide. Jamirian James, an 85 overall. This guy was a transfer. He finishes his career with 57 total tackles. 23 for a loss. 15 sacks. A touchdown. A forced fumble. Three fumble recoveries. This man was a god. Like I said, he was a transfer. We only had him for two years, but to get 23 TFLs and 15 sacks in two years. Like I said, he's an All-American. He's a beast. Not that tall. Pretty short, actually, but... Jamirian James is somebody who I could see finding his way onto some kind of NFL roster because he's just a very talented kid. He might have to move to defensive end, but he's a beast. And we got three transfer requests. None of these guys really, to be honest, this might sound harsh, but none of these guys really deserve to be here. So Drew Hawthorne, I'm sorry buddy, you're coming from Oregon. You're not really a guy we can take. Brian Manson, a 54 overall. Yeesh. We can't take you either. Clay Harley's a 67 overall freshman, so I'll give him a shot. He's got some potential. All right, so it's time for us to do the offseason recruiting. Brian Williams is the guy I need desperately. I'm going to give him like 14,000. So this is what I'm doing. Brian Williams, 14,000. He's the beast quarterback in Ben Young. I do want him as well, so I'm going to get him. But Joe Carpenter, he's kind of a loss. I mean, I guess I could try to fight Bama, but you kind of got to just go all in on one guy. And Brian Williams is the guy we need. And we did it. Brian Williams committed. I'm happy. Didn't get anybody else, but that's fine by me. Brian was the main objective. Clinton Rodriguez, the kicker I wanted, went to LSU. So hopefully we can wipe the floor with them one day. Can't look at stats, but Brian Williams is a god. Doing position changes real quick. I did move Jeremy Thompson. He's like what, our fifth corner, and he was a starter originally. Because Mr. Matthew Flowers, I don't even know who this guy is. But Jeremy Thompson will be at least a decent backup for the safety spots, and he's a senior, so I definitely want to get him on the field. And Chad Hudson, I'm definitely going to put him either at corner or safety. I probably should have just put this guy. Let me look at his safety stats. Okay, he could be a decent. We do need a good free safety as well. And Brian Williams here, 78 overall, 93 speed, 90 XL. This is John Harvey's replacement here. 86 throw power, 82 accuracy. This is 100%. A quarterback. Wow, he's already an 80 overall as a freshman. Hasn't even stepped foot on campus. And Anthony Ferris, I checked, his catching's pretty good, so we'll probably just slot him in at receiver. He also could play tight end, so I'm going to probably think do that. We'll probably make him a receiver, too. I know we got 100 receivers, but... Wow, Garrett Moore's got pretty good blocking. I might throw him on the O-line. And Mr. Zeph Kennery here, he's at 94 speed, 89 XL. Catching's a little rough, so I'm probably just going to go running back. And Mr. Pedro London, I'm probably just going to go ahead and throw him in at eh, one of the safety spots. Who cares? Training results. My God, Harvey got another speed boost. Harvey now is at 94 throw power, 89 accuracy. My God. Trey Smith up to a 92, our backup. Both of them got 99 awareness. Joe Manning, our third stringer, coming along nicely as a freshman. J.J. Taylor up to an 85, Thomas Diggs to a 79. Wow, Thomas Diggs now has a 97 speed. Keith Alvarez up to a 91, 96 speed. Wow, he's getting fast and a 94 XL. Arthur Gardner up to an 87. He is a, just a genetic freak. Kaysen up to an 84. Hudson Henry is going to finish as a 99. I told you, bud, we'll get you in that first round. Hudson Henry now has a 91 catching, 81 spec catch, 89 catch in traffic. Jesus, he's a monster. Anderson, 77. Xavier Robertson, wow, up to an 80. Both our left guards up to an 80. Quentin Madison up to an 84. The center, he's been projected as a tackle. Lucas up to a 79 and Gatewood. And Sam Lewis up to an 80. Deshaun Hall, an 89 as a senior, my god. Jamal McPherson up to an 87. He's still got two years, wow. Dallas Moore is moving up as well. Our defensive tackles are all killing it. Dodie, 78. Lewis, who was an All-American, up to a 72. Michael Mullins, a 72, their redshirt year. Scotty Watkins in year two is going to be a 69 overall. Oh, he's from Sweetwater, Tennessee. Nice. Matt Irvin up to an 80. Wow, he's getting better. And Kenny Dickerson up to a 73. Chip Hines, my God, up to a 91 as a senior. This will be his last year. Look at our corner back room. It's just insane. And look at all these young guys in the 70s, like... This guy's in the 80s. My god, this is just a star-studded lineup here. Orgy up to a 96. Good to see. He'll 
definitely get a high draft pick as well. Greg Holden, young guy. Well, not too young. He's a junior, but he's up to a 77. Antonio Daniel to an 89. This will be his last year. Jeremy Thompson, his last year as well. TJ Scott is a sophomore kicker, a 92 overall. A 98 kick accuracy, 88 kick power. My God. Darren Bozeman, our punter, a 96, up plus 7. In terms of depth charts, obviously John Harvey's number 1. Trey Smith is number 2. Brian Williams might eat a red shirt. J.J. Taylor and Thomas Diggs are going to be our two running backs that we go with. Diggs is so fast, but J.J. Taylor is also a monster. Alvarez, Gardner, and Kaysen will be our top three receivers here. And Hudson Henry is going to be our tight end. And Ed Moss, as a freshman, is going to be a starter at left tackle. Tariq Anderson is going to be the backup. Xavier Robertson and Conley at left guard. And Quentin Madison, our center. And Kevin Lucas and Gatewood at right guard. And then Sam Lewis at right tackle. Deshaun Hall at left end. McPherson at right. Left linebacker is going to be Scotty Watkins. Just trust the process on that one. Carlos Atkins, obviously, our god. And Kenny Dickerson, his last year, right linebacker. Mullins is backing up multiple spots. Also, can't forget about one of my subscribers, Geo West. He commented, I got him on here as a linebacker. I was going to make you a crew, but I was like, you know what? I got a freshman on the team that's got the perfect position. So I'm like, here, I'm just going to throw you on, get you as much swag as possible. So... So he's going to be our backup right outside linebacker. I'm definitely going to try to get him involved to maybe some formation subs just, you know, because the subscribers and people that I know in real life and, you know, the recruits, it's always fun to get him involved and not have him sit on the bench. But he also does have a YouTube channel. He does NCAA 14 Dynasties. I'll put a little link up in the top right corner. And then for corners, it's going to be Chip Hines, John Gray, Travis Thomas, Orgy at free safety, Thompson backing him up. Antonio Daniel with strong safety with Thompson backing him up. Scott a kicker. Bozeman at punter. And Thomas Diggs and Keith Alvarez at their kick return spot. And red shirting, I'm going to go ahead and get Brian Williams because he will definitely need him and he's going to be a, a god tier player by the time he's a senior. And I'm going to hit these two guys down here because they're not going to play, so might as well just give him a red shirt. And the last two guys on the receiver chart, let's get them in a year to hit the weights. And Mr. Evan Joyce, he's far down the depth chart. Let's get him a year under his belt. Leonard Codwell is going to be sitting for a while, so get him as well. I know Anthony Wright is one of our top corners, but I think I'm going to redshirt him because we've kind of got all the young guys, so I think Anthony Hughes can take his spot swimmingly. He's played very good, and he's a Juco, so we might as well get him in. Pedro could use the year, and Chuck Mills is a freshman, so we got to do it. Now taking a look at our schedule here, it's an A. Um, I wanted to get Marshall because that's my team IRL, so I'd like to play them and check in on how they're doing. Obviously, we get all our lock games. We got a top 25 game there, top against Florida if they're still there, and I put Notre Dame on because I want to play them too. I just wanted to make the schedule a little bit tougher. We got Georgia again. They're always going to be a problem for us. And I'm going to make a bunch of prospects because I had a bunch of people leave names, so I'm going to put them into the game as well. All right, so for recruiting, I did get some names from the Facebook group for NCAA 14. I think I did about 11 created recruits because it's just very time consuming. All right, so at first we got Todd Rempe from Tulsa, Oklahoma, four-star quarterback prospect. We're not really on his list, but I mean, it's expected. Do got quite a bit of bonus factors. Go ahead and scout him fully. 78 overall, 81 speed, 82 acceleration, 81 throw power, 79 throw accuracy, so a pretty solid quarterback. And next up at running back, we got Christian Bernal from Corpus Christi, Texas. He's a five-star prospect. He's actually number two on our board. Like 70,000 bonus factors. I feel like we're going to get him. Go ahead and do a little scouting here. He's going to be a 79 overall, 89 speed, 86 XL. Got a good carry in at 81, 86 juke move, 84 elusiveness. So a pretty solid all around back. And next up, we got Tristan Knowles. He is from Waco, Texas. Fullback, three star prospect. Crap ton of bonus factors. And go ahead and hit the little scout button here. He's going to be a 74 overall, 71 speed, 76 acceleration. Got a pretty good break tackle at 84. Good trucking at 83, and actually pretty decent blocking attributes, even though they gave us the red arrows. Next up, we got Juan Rojas. He's going to be a three-star prospect kicker from Miami, Florida. Go ahead and give him a little scout job. He's going to have a 78 kick power and a 82 kick accuracy, so a pretty solid little kicker. 
And next up, we got Matt Quick, four-star prospect, 5'10", 228, from St. Louis, Missouri at Strong Safety. Go ahead and get us a little scout here. He's got 84 speed, 86 XL, pretty good zone coverage at 78, and incredible. He's mostly a tackling guy with an 80 tackle and 87 hit power, so this dude's going to be lighting people up. His coverage is a little bit rough, but he's a pretty solid prospect still. And next up, we got Demetrius Reese, three-star prospect from Chicago, Illinois. He's a corner, and he's a gem prospect with a 90 speed, 88 XL, 77 man, 78 zone. 70 press so he's definitely a very good little cornerback here an 81 pursuit so he's looking really solid and next up we got jc martin from senatobia if i can pronounce that right mississippi go ahead and scout him here 89 speed 88 excel 82 man coverage lower zone coverage and a 78 press and next up another creative prospect keith oh this name is not going to be fun for me shirugi uh, that's just my best guess he's a four-star prospect Tight end from Elgin, Illinois. Oh, damn it. I can't even get him. He, program tradition deal breaker. He says, uh-uh. But we'll take a look at him anyway, see where he goes. Pretty good catching for a tight end. Pretty good blocking as well. 80 run block. And next at tight end, we got Jay Ross. He's a three-star blocking tight end, it looks like, from Detroit, Michigan. Former basketball player. And taking a look at the stats here, he's got really pretty good speed, 81 and 83 XL. Catching is a little rough, but it's not anywhere in a danger zone. And he's got a pretty decent run block. Next up, a defensive end, we got Dylan Perkins, three-star prospect from Altus, I believe, Oklahoma. Uh, 71 overall, 81 XL, 77 speed. Really good finesse moves, decent block shedding, pretty decent tackling. And I believe, lastly, for the created recruits, we got Trey Trammell. He is a possession receiver from Charleston, South Carolina, four-star prospect, six foot three. Got good bonus factors. And we will go ahead and scout him here. 86 speed, 91 acceleration. Really good catching at 80. 74 spec catch, 72 catch in traffic, 80 route running. So he's a very good possession receiver out here. I'd definitely like to get him, hopefully. But it looks like Notre Dame is going after us. And this guy is not a creative recruit. Brandon Jackson, he's a five-star prospect athlete. The number one athlete in the country, and he wants us. All right, so essentially he's kind of a rare prospect. For the number one athlete, I figured he'd be better, but he's got decent speed, and he'd probably project as a quarterback, 89 throw power, 80 accuracy. All right, so that's going to do it. I'm going to go into the recruiting and kind of do that on my own time. I don't want to record, you know, me going through, you know, 7,000 different recruits and all the positions of need. But LeVon Hilliard taking a look here is four years, 36-17 and 17 overall record, security safe. Of course, why would it not be? We're a prestige A. We are 6-6 six six versus the top 25. In the next episode, we're going to be starting on Season 5. It's going to be an interesting time. We are the reigning, defending, undisputed champions of the world. So that's going to be interesting. We need Paul Heyman out here giving us a little bit of a promo. You know, that'd be fun. For the reigning, defending, undisputed. But yeah, if you could, leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you want to see the next season. It's going to be fun times. We'll see what kind of craziness goes on because it's always crazy in NCAA 14. It's always just a ton of shenanigans going on. But that is going to do it for this episode. Peace out.